I was asked to speak about MDG5, uh, which is a goal to improve maternal health. And this is an interesting MDG because quite late in the day, it got us sort of part B. So the initial goal was targeted at improving maternal health with goals around uh, reductions in maternal, the maternal mortality ratio and in the, in the universal coverage with skilled attendants at the time of delivery. And then subsequently, uh, indicators around reproductive health access were added that were about uh, unmet need for family planning, contraceptive prevalence, adolescent pregnancy. The problem of maternal death is a large one. A woman dies every minute, day in and day out. And maternal mortality, when you look at it, is a public health indicator with the biggest gap between rich and poor countries. So if you look at this sort of global map, what you see is a sort of dark swathe of color across the southern hemisphere. And basically, the darker the color, the higher the maternal mortality ratio. And what you see is the problem is primarily in uh, South Asia and Sub-Saharan Africa. But it's not only that the poor countries face higher maternal mortality, but you have inequity within countries. And this is, again, using these uh, wealth quintiles. And what you can see, for example, if you look at Peru, is the richest 20% have mortality that's an, uh, eight times less than the, the poorest 20%. And I think a very compelling uh, factor in, in you know, when you compare numbers of maternal deaths globally to numbers of child deaths, uh, they're not nearly as big. Uh, but I think one of the very compelling factors is that most maternal deaths are judged to be preventable. And if you look, for example, in the UK, uh, more men die of breast cancer than women die of maternal causes. So it's practically an eliminated cause of, of death. <coughs> Uh, maternal survival, uh, which is, is the main target, is tied to several of the Millennium Development Goals. Obviously, it is the, the target of MDG 5, which is to reduce maternal deaths by 75% by 2015. But it's linked to MDGs on poverty reduction, female empowerment, infectious diseases. Um, it obviously supports and strengthens efforts to promote maternal newborn survival, because if the mother survives, that's a big uh, benefit to the child. And also, uh, in terms of improving the health of the child, welfare of the whole family. And also, this is an MDG that's felt to be addressed primarily through health system strengthening. So if your goal is, in general, to try to support the health system infrastructure, uh, this is, this, these are strategies that seem to go together very well. Now, I thought I'd just start by showing you global figures. Um, the 1990 estimate, the global estimate, was about 425 per 100,000. Uh, we have an estimate for, for 2,000. And if you follow the line, that's sort of where we're going to get to in 2015, whereas the target is down here. So this is one of the MDGs that's seriously off track. Um, people look at it within regions. And um, given what you've heard, uh, and, and maybe I shouldn't say it given what Kim said, but the area, with the region that's showing the least progress is sub-Saharan Africa. In fact, there are several countries where there have been increases in maternal mortality, whereas in some regions you do see uh, more substantial improvements than, than the global average. I want to tell you a little bit about um, what women die of, because I think that's very important in terms of understanding what we do about it. Um, these are data for the two regions where the problem is the biggest, Sub-Saharan Africa and South Asia. And what you see is here you have the maternal deaths by cause. And the big one on the bottom, the red, uh, these are women who are bleeding to death. Okay, so they have the baby, and typically after the delivery, they're, they're bleeding to death. Um, and that's the biggest cause of death. Most of the problems can't be very easily prevented. Okay, ahead of time. So unlike immunization, there's no immunization to prevent from uh, prevent postpartum hemorrhage or prevent um, obstructed labor. Um, and also, most of the life-saving interventions require considerable skill. Okay, so these are not things, for example, in neonatal health, we talk about uh, promoting early breastfeeding. You can tell a mother, breastfeed early. Um, breastfeed exclusively. That's something that's relatively easy for, for a woman to do. But here we're talking about more complex interventions. The second important factor is when women die. And this is looking at the risk of death. And what you can see is risk of death during pregnancy is relatively low. 
But on the day of delivery, in the 24 hours afterwards, you've got the highest risk, and then it tapers down uh, postpartum. A very, very effective thing you can do to prevent maternal death is to make sure that women who don't want to be pregnant, who have an unmet need for contraception, are contracepting. Okay? If you don't get pregnant, you're not going to die of maternal causes. That doesn't work for women who do want to get pregnant, obviously, but that's a, a very effective strategy. We have lots of experience with how to do this and get it out, and there's really a failure, I think, of political will to do the family planning. Um, abortion services are another thing. Many women, um, global estimates vary by region, but say uh, 10 to 13 percent of women are estimated to die of unsafe abortion. Um, and here again, we have very effective technologies. There's medical abortion, there's vacuum aspiration, and yet this is one where I think, for political reasons, we're not really tackling. So where are we with respect to this? Well, first, this is one of the targets, which is the skilled attendance at delivery. And these are, again, some of the data that uh, Kim uh, referred to that come from this countdown to 2015. <coughs> Here they've got a a subset of 32 priority countries among the 68 priority countries. And if you look overall um, at where they are in terms of coverage of births with a health professional, you can see that there are a few countries on track. Uh, there are sort of quite a lot of countries that are on watch and some countries that are on high alert. But if you look and move to an urban-rural analysis within the same countries, again, you see this equity factor coming in. In urban areas, most women, and th these are primarily data from, from Sub-Saharan Africa and South Asia, urban women are delivering in facilities with a skilled attendant, okay? So um, 70 to 80 percent um, of women deliver with a professional. But when you move into rural areas, you find that only a third of women <coughs> have a professional attending them at birth, and again, and, and that's reflected in seeing the far greater proportion of countries that are not on track, that are in the danger area. There's a, a shortage of human resources, and we talked about that earlier in the education, uh, MDG. Uh, there's a need to double the supply of health professionals. We don't need as many as, I can't remember quite what the figure was for, for primary school teachers, but 300,000 are estimated uh, 300,000 new health professionals are needed by 2015 to achieve a coverage of 75 percent, not 100 percent. And also there's a need for more health facilities. And again, some of the work that we've been doing, when you look at distance, you find that many women are very far from these facilities. In rural Bangladesh, the costs for a complicated delivery are <coughs> nearly 100 percent of the household GDP per capita. So these are catastrophic costs for these households. I think we need to think more strategically and prioritize care during delivery. Um, all women should be able to deliver in health centers with midwives working in teams. And we need to target women in the, with the greatest need, which are poor and rural women in sub-Saharan Africa and South Asia. We need more health professionals for delivery. Um, and make sure that we're making strategic human resource decisions. And again, I would say this is one way in which this ties to the education MDG. We do need these health workers to be trained and put in post. Um, and we need to implement plans now for training and deployment uh, and, and train them well with the right skills and competencies. Also efforts to retain existing staff. I wanted to end on a slightly more optimistic note. I mean, progress is possible, and these are a series of, of countries. Uh, the ones with long uh, time series are Sri Lanka, Thailand, and Malaysia, where there are good routine data showing sustained declines. But also, there are, there are quite good data from uh, places like uh, India, the orange, three orange points, uh, Bangladesh, Egypt. Um, showing that in the, in the period that we've been talking about, there have been uh, sustained declines in mortality. If I wanted to summarize this, I'd say the health center strategy is key, that too many women are still dying in their prime years. This is an MDG that 189 countries have, have signed up to, and we need to get on with what works. But also we need to get on with learning some of the lessons that cut across these MDGs.